Hi everyone, I wanted to make this quick tutorial just to show you that niche research doesn't have to be time consuming. So what I'm going to show you here is a quick technique to quickly knock out five or ten potential niches in the space of a couple of hours so that you then have something to start working on and narrowing down in order to choose an actual niche to move forward with. So this is niche research in 10 minutes flat and what you will need, you will need a text editor, a notepad, Amazon, Facebook, a Google Keyword Planner tool and good old Google itself. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go along to Amazon. Now this could be Amazon.com, it could be .co.uk, it could be .ca, just whatever is going to be relevant to you. And what you want to do is you want to click on departments. So don't select one of these because when you hover your mouse over the word departments, the drop down box opens up. Don't select a category, just click on the word departments and a page will open up that shows you all the different categories on Amazon. Now when I did this I just selected something at random. I didn't rehearse this at all because I want to show you how it can be done very quickly. So for the purposes of this video I selected bedding and bath. So when I clicked on that, a page opened up that showed me all the different subcategories under the bedding and bath department on Amazon. So what you want to do is, now you could be selecting a completely different uh, category obviously, but what you want to do is you want to take a quick look through the subcategories and think to yourself, which of these subcategories would be suitable for to create a website around on its own. So assuming that you are only going to focus in um, quite specifically on one particular type of product, which of these categories would be suitable to do that? Well, first of all, looking at this one here, mattress toppers, you couldn't really create a website around nothing but mattress toppers, so that's not suitable. Kids bedding, however, that would be suitable. And bedding sets and collections, you could definitely create a website around nothing but bedding sets and collections because, you know, people buy lots of these things. They don't just buy one, they buy lots of them. And when they redecorate their bedroom, they might buy more into because they like everything to be matching. Blankets and throws, could you create a website around that? Possibly, probably, yes. Um, makeup organizers, not really. Um, you couldn't really just have a website on nothing but makeup organizers. And the same with these things here. Um, air mattresses, be very difficult to have a website just on air mattresses. People don't really um, buy lots of these things and they're not really looking at buying different designs and different colors of them. So it's not like bedding sets for example or kids bedding even quilts and quilt sets you could definitely create something based just around that so um, for the purposes here of this video I'm going to go with bedding sets and collections so we've now looked at Amazon so the next step is we're going to go over to Facebook and we're going to just have a look to see, is there an audience on Facebook for something like bedding sets and collections? So I wanted to come up with things that are very closely related to bedding sets. So I typed in bedroom and bedroom decor and straight away we can see bedroom set. This is a popular search with almost 85,000 people talking about this. Bedroom design ideas, 85,000 people. Bedroom suite, 85,000 people bedroom decorating ideas, bedroom decor and bedroom decorations. All these kind of things all tie in with bedding sets because, you know, as I mentioned already, people want their bedding sets to match the decor in their bedroom. So definitely we will be able to find an audience on Facebook for this particular type of product. 
So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go over to Google AdWords, the Keyword Planner tool. You go into the Keyword Planner tool and you click on where it says search for new keywords using a phrase, website or category. Now for this demonstration, I'm targeting the United Kingdom. You could be targeting a completely different country. And I've typed in the keyword bedding set just to see what kind of demand there is for this outside of Facebook. So, you know, is this bedding set, is this something that has a big demand? I think we already know it is, but we're just going to go through the process anyway, because perhaps when you're doing your research, it might not be so obvious. So, first of all, what we can see is for the search term bedding set, there are 27,000 average monthly searches. Now, don't forget, this is in the UK, which is a much smaller market than the United States. So that's really good. And then if we look at some more searches on the same page, then what we can see is that different search terms are related. For example, bedding is pretty much the same thing as bedding sets. That's got 40,000 searches. We've got duvet covers. Well, they're parts of bedding sets as well. They're the covers that go on the doobies. We call them doobies. I don't really know what you would call them in the United States, but there are those big quilts that you put covers on um, and use instead of blankets. Over 40,000 searches there. And then things like beds, breads, duvet, um, comforter, bedroom sets. So as we can see, there are a lot of people searching to buy these things online. So we've confirmed we've got an audience on Facebook. We've confirmed that there are enough people searching for this. It's enough demand for this kind of niche. We've used common sense to uh, pick out that category, that subcategory, bedding sets, that particular type of product. When we looked on Amazon under the bedding and bath department, we used common sense to decide, yeah, we could make a, a website. We could focus everything around just bedding sets. There are so many different types, so many different de designs and things that we could sell that we would have loads and loads of uh, opportunity there just to sell nothing but bedding sets. Now the next thing, we're going to go over to Google and we're going to look to see if we can find a dropship supplier for bedding or bedding sets. So I just typed in bedding wholesale dropship. Now I could have just typed in bedding dropship but I just typed in bedding wholesale dropship. Sometimes you get better results. And there are plenty of suppliers for this particular product. This is page one of Google. I can only show half of it here. And I've pointed some red arrows towards these websites, these companies here who dropship bedding. Further down the same page, here are another one, two, three, four, five. So I don't think we'd have any trouble finding a dropship supplier for that particular type of product. Now, I also wanted to go take a look at quilts because I kind of thought that would be a really nice thing to make a website around, a really nice thing to make a Facebook page around. They're colorful, there's all sorts of different patterns. And these are things that people actually collect. So if people are like quilts, they're into quilts, they don't just buy one, but they'll be buying them all the time. They'll be looking for different colors, different designs. Sometimes people are looking for a specific type of quilt, specific design. And so I typed handmade quilts wholesale UK because if I was focusing on the UK market, I want to make sure I'm getting UK suppliers, but I didn't type dropship. I typed wholesale instead because this is much more of a of a small, more specialist kind of niche. So it will be difficult to find companies who actually say, oh yes, we drop ship and that and that would come up in the search results on Google. But what we can find or we can look for instead are the small manufacturers. Now, these guys are often open to drop shipping their products for retailers. So that's what I'm looking for here in this search. And I came up with a few. And this one I came up here, this is uh, a small company and she makes these cushions and she makes these quilts. Now what you would do is have a quick look at the website and then contact her and ask, 
look, um, I would really love to list some of your products on my website for sale. Would you be willing to drop ship for me if I sent you the orders? Now, she may or may not be open to that, but a lot of them are open to that. And here's another one along the same lines. This is another, a small website, a little bit more modern. And another one here, this again, this is in the UK. These are all small manufacturers. They're making their own quilts and selling them. So basically, they are often, as I say, I just want to stress this because you should not be afraid to contact these people, that they are often very willing and delighted when someone contacts them and say, look, I really like your products, I really like to sell your products, but would you drop ship for me if I send you the orders? Right, so don't be afraid to do that. Sometimes they have never been approached by anybody before about this. And maybe you'd have to correspond and communicate with them a little bit, first of all, because it may be something that they've never even thought about doing. So therefore, it could be a new kind of concept to them. So you might have to communicate a, a bit with them about it. But don't be afraid to do this, because by doing this, you're going to find opportunities that other people who are doing what you're doing, i.e. dropshipping, and you're going to be opening up product lines and products that these other people don't have access to because they're just doing what everyone else does, going online saying, oh yeah, this company drop ships, I'll go with them. They're not actually contacting manufacturers like this, small companies like this, what we call the mom and pop companies. They're not doing that. And here's another one again, right? So that's one, two, three, four that I picked out there very, very quickly when I was doing that research. And all four of them are small, what you call mom and pop companies. This one here, she makes her own quilts. She, she's she got her website. She goes to some trade shows and that's about all she probably does, right? So you're in with a good chance with these people of being able to um, sell their products and have them drop ship for you. All right, so that was niche research in 10 minutes. If it took me longer than 10 minutes, that's because I'm also explaining to you the process as we go along, but you can do this in 10 minutes. So you could do five niches in round about an hour just by starting off on Amazon. Let's go way back to the beginning. Starting off on Amazon. Going to Amazon there, clicking on departments, selecting a category here from the all departments page, then looking at the subcategories using common sense to decide whether or not you could build a website around one of these subcategories. Because if you start off like that with just one subcategory, one particular type of product, you can then add more later on. So you can start off with for example, if you started off with bedding sets, then later on you could always always add kids bedding and different kinds of accessories as well. Then go over to Facebook, determine whether or not you have an audience on Facebook. That's really important because it's going to make your life so much easier if you do. Then go along to the Google Keyword Planner tool to establish demand outside of Facebook, doing a search on those search terms just to make sure that you've got, you know, you want at least four or 5,000 searches a month. Now this has got much more than that and this is only in the UK as well, but you want at least four or 5,000 searches a month. If you, and we're talking about a very specific product here. If you're, if you're searching for a broader niche, you want a lot more than that. But if you're just talking about one specific type of product, you want at very least four or 5,000 searches a month on the main search term and then you want more searches on the related search terms as well. Then you go over to Google and you find and you look to see whether or not you're going to be able to get a dropship supplier for that particular product. Now if you can tick all the boxes, so if all of this works out for you, then you can jot this down on your notepad so you can type that onto your text file and then go on and do this again five or six times. So you've got yourself five or six niches 
and you've done all that in the space of one to two hours, a really good starting point. And from there, you can narrow it down based on different criteria. For example, on your own personal preference, there might be one niche in there, one particular type of product in there that resonates with you more than the others. So you could then do your uh, further research on maybe two or three of those niches that you've got jotted down on your text file just to find out how profitable they're going to be, you know, whether it's going to work out really well for you and, you know, if they really resonate with you as well. So that was just a very quick tutorial just to show you that niche research doesn't have to be difficult. You don't have to get hung up on it and it doesn't have to take a long time.